Hello friends, my name is Dave Layton and I welcome you to this study on 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the letters of John. Uh, we're continuing in this study. This is actually the fourth lesson and this particular topic is the continuation of the idea of walking in the light. In the previous lesson, we began to look at what John teaches us about walking in the light. Walking in the light, as we stated, is the first of three ideas that John wishes us to learn. The first is, of course, walking in the light. The second is abiding in love. We'll cover that in a future lesson. And then the third one is exercising our faith. So John covers all three of these critical concepts or key ideas in his letters. But in this lesson, we'll continue looking at what John means by uh, saying walking in the light. Uh, we'll look at it, uh, what it means, but we'll also look at what are the benefits to us as Christians. Now let's begin by reading the critical passage that's associated with this idea of walking in the light. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and I'm reading 1 John chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 5. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. This is a wonderful passage and there's several key points within this that uh, we'll, we'll be able to look at, some things that jump out of this passage. One of them, for example, is the faithfulness of God. It comes through very clearly. But also communicated in this passage is the need for our faithfulness. And then, of course, there's God's love. And it's demonstrated through the other part of this passage that uh, stands out, and that's the forgiveness of sin, something we all need, should all be seeking. Well, before we proceed, I do want to remind you that John is writing this letter to Christians. These are people that have already confessed the name of Jesus. This is people who have already repented. They've made that commitment to live according to the teachings of Christ and have been baptized for the remission of their sins. Friends, I hope that's you. And if it is you, then, then you are able to take advantage of these blessings. If you have not done that, if you have not confessed Christ, repented of your sins, and uh, been baptized for the remission of your sins, you need to do that so that you too can receive the benefits and the blessings that John's talking about that. All right, so the first point that I want to explore is uh, is fellowship with God. That's, that's what we gain through our forgiveness of our sins. There's some key concepts uh, in, in this, as I've said. First of all, in verse 6, there's actually uh, some uh, opposing points. How can we claim to have fellowship with God if we practice sin. We cannot walk in the light and at the same time walk in darkness. You just can't do both. It's impossible to be in those two stages equally at the same time. We're fooling ourselves if we think we can do that. Now there's also complementing statements, statements that support each other in verse 7. If, if we walk in the light, we do have fellowship with each other and the blood of Christ cleanses us from sin. So cleansing us from sin, it, it, it has the wonderful impact of making us spiritually clean before God. Being spiritually clean is important for a variety of reasons, but obviously sin cannot be in the presence of God. So if we are practicing sin, we cannot be in the presence of God. Also, there's, there's just no way that we can cleanse ourselves. The blood of Christ cleanses us. Now, the other point John brings out in this passage is that Jesus is the standard uh, as he is walking in the light. In other words, it, Jesus is the standard. Uh, that's the next point that I do want to bring out. Standard of light is Jesus as we walk in the light. Uh, we're, we are not the standard 
we cannot make ourselves righteous. There's no way that we're able to do this. No mortal being, no man is capable of, of this. Uh, Romans 3.23, we'll look at it again later, but Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's through Christ that we're made clean. So we, we, we look to Jesus as the standard. Now remember, walking in something, that means we're abiding by it or following it. It's our way of life. And we're going to explore that a little bit. So walking in the light as he is in the light, it means we're following the teaches, teachings of Jesus and, and not living in darkness. So John clearly draws a line between walking in darkness and walking in light in verses 6 and 7. And it's an important question to ask. At, at what point is someone actually walking in darkness and not walking in light? And so we have to ask ourselves as we look at this, well, what is my focus? Uh, what are we doing continually? What are we doing purposefully? In other words, with intent. Again, uh, we, we can look at several things, but uh, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1, <coughs> and also uh, Romans 6, verse 15. Paul's asking the question here as it begins, shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? And Paul says, may it not be so. Some versions say, uh, God forbid. Uh, he, he says, you know, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? There's an interesting word in that statement there in Romans 6 1. Note the preposition in. Are we to continue in sin? Now, as used by Paul in this statement, he's saying we're walking in sin, continuing in sin. That's different than the mistakes we make, the occasional sins we're involved in. Now, it's not an excuse to sin. We should do everything we can because Paul goes on in, in uh, Romans 6 to talk about how, how can we sin. We've died to sin. It, it's no longer part of our lives. And so if we find ourselves in situations where we're repeatedly or habitually or continuing to sin, and we're running the risk of being in sin and have not repented. We do need to repent of that. So it's not the, the uh, mistakes or the actions that we did not do as purpose. Again, we all sin, and, and that's what uh, this passage is talking about. So this, this preposition, this word in, it serves as a transitional word between the words on either side of it or the clause before the ones afterwards. In other words, walking in light, walking in darkness, or continuing in sin. So you see there's that, that impact of that. It's, it's we're involved with it on a continual basis. That's a major difference between continuing to live in sin and to sin, as is in 1 John chapter 1. Uh, verses 8 through 10. If uh, we, we know, again, Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are redeemed through Christ. We're brought and we're bought and given to God. That's what Romans 6 teaches us. It's only through Jesus that our sins are covered. Now, John said that in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 14 and verse 6. John says, speaking, writing what Jesus says, John writes, Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, and that's through Jesus. So John makes a key point in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. John's key point is that if we are living faithfully, and I really want to drive that point home, if we are living faithfully, then we're walking in light. Then we have fellowship with each other and with God. You know, fellowship is a wonderful thing. It means we have things in common. We share things. The fellowship with each other is our continued citizenship in God's kingdom. It means we're acceptable before God. We have fellowship with each other, and we have fellowship with God. 
The blood of Christ continues to make us clean and to keep us before God. So this passage was critical to first century Christians because of the false teachers that, that were causing them to doubt their salvation. The Christians had acted upon their faith by confessing Jesus as Lord, omitting the teachings of Jesus, and I mean, committing to the teachings of Jesus, excuse me, and being baptized for the remission of their sins. They repented and were baptized for the remission of their sins. So now in their new faith, uh, they, they were trying uh, to live faithful, but some were trying to separate them from God by causing them to doubt. That's, that's what this Gnosticism and false teachers were all about, causing them to doubt their salvation. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm brought to memory about Satan as he approached Eve in the garden. That's what he did. He cast doubt in Eve's mind. Remember, he said, did, did God say you could not eat of any of the trees of the garden? Did he really say that? And, and uh, Eve said, uh, yes, except for the tree. We can eat of any tree except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then Satan came back and said, you surely won't die. See, he's casting doubt in her mind. Indeed, she and Adam did not immediately die in a physical way. They began the process of dying, but they did die eventually. More to the point, uh, they caused a separation from God that leads to spiritual death. So John shows us that when we are in Christ or walking in the light, then we are not separated from God. There's two important things to remember as I close this lesson. The first is that, again, I want to remind you, it is written to those who have already obeyed the gospel. If you have not obeyed the gospel, then you're not walking in the light. Try as you might. You, you might be a good person. You might try to live by the standards that we, we find in Scripture. But if you have not confessed Christ, repented for your, of your sins, making that commitment to live the life that Jesus wants us to live, and been baptized for the remission of your sins, then you are not walking in the light. You still are in darkness. So you need to take care of that immediately. The second thing is that God knows our weaknesses, and he, he asks us to be faithful. When, when we're doing our best to be faithful, that he forgives our sins. Again, it's not licensed to sin because we're making that effort to walk in the light, not walk in darkness. So when we repent, we turn back to God, God forgives us. But remember, that's a promise to those who are his children, citizens in God's kingdom. Well, in our next lesson, we're going to look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. This is a puzzling uh, passage to some people, and, and we're going to look at how this compares to walking in the light. Well, I thank you for your participation, and again, we give God the glory. Thank you.